Hi, everybody. I'm going to be doing some more live uh, drawing on my Tacoma Artist and Mr. Project. So let me go ahead and activate up my screen. Where are we? Here we go. Show you how far I've gotten along. This is my inking today. So, uh, I'll I think what I'll do is uh, going to work and draw my friend Nori up here along with his project. Going into my Facebook. And I'm going to keep an eye on people who are watching this. Oh, I'm trying to remember how long ago I met Nori and where I met him. Typically, we meet anymore at uh, Freelance Fandango, which is a group of freelancers who get together. In Tacoma every Monday. You can find the group uh, on uh, Freelance Fandango's there's a Facebook page. Nori does a lot of public art. And this piece that I have him holding is a portrait he did of Ruth Gator Ginsburg. And it was vandalized eight different times. And the last couple, the police staked out the site and caught The, uh, the uh, the vandals red-handed, and it was considered a hate crime because of the way they were vandalizing the artwork. The fact that he had the tenacity to redo the artwork. As a matter of fact, he had had two panels of art going at all times so that if one panel was vandalized, the next panel would be up and ready to go at a moment's notice. Now, initially in the sketch, I had him 
kind of small and over here. But uh, I decided I wanted to have him larger, even if uh, it kind of didn't match the perspective, a real life perspective of the space. Tulsa Plaza, which is where this drawing is located, is a really large space. Matter of fact, I only have a small section of it actually shown in this drawing. Thank you, Angela, for, uh, pardon me. And Joe, Eunice just liked my post. Thank you very much. Haven't been online very long. Nori teaches Japanese. So I always like to practice my forgotten Japanese with him. Nice feature is in a procreate if you draw a line that's straight. It will re uh, remember and come straight out from the end point. The reason you're seeing this at an angle is because easier for me to draw a straight line at an angle. So given this unique feature, probably not necessary. This is going very quickly. My wife and I went for a walk this morning while it's still cool. We uh, also decided to go to Costco. While it was relatively cool out. I 
is that was the wise choice. I have not seen the movie on the basis of sex yet. So I'm looking forward to watching that. This is going swimmingly well. Very pleased. I'm trying desperately to take my own advice today. Uh, I was telling my friend Mark Brill that uh, he shouldn't spend as much time as he does on the projects that he loves to draw. Only, I only meant that uh, he tends to allocate too much time to a project, but I do the same thing. I am so guilty of spending too much time on something. Nori did such a wonderful job with this image. Got her so perfectly down. I want to do the same, even if it's just my caricature of his caricature. I'm using a feature of Procreate where you can tap twice on your pen tip and it will automatically switch you from inking to eraser tool.
this is going nicely, very, very nicely. Now to uh, this part will be interesting. Let's see. Ah, oh, yeah, the auto draw tool works. There we go. Just like if you're holding um, your line down for a straight point, this will also clean up a curved line. That's good. Very, very nice. And what I like about Procreate is that you can go ahead and draw a section and then rest your hand on it and not worry about it getting all smeared or what have you. On this, you will notice that where the blue line is concerned, I'm dry, drawing on the outside of the blue line. That is because in this layout, this section here is going to be all black. And so a quick drop fill will fill that all in. And I don't want to fill up the letters too much. Now you'll see that there's a lot of anti-aliasing going on. This is at 300 DPI. And I prefer a much tighter, I don't like, I don't like anti-aliasing. I like to have all, all, the, all these little gray pixels that you see, I don't like seeing those. So once I have this layer, see this layer here to the, the, the image layer. Once I have this layer all inked, I'm going to export it into uh, Photoshop and then convert it over to bitmap, which will then give me a nice crisp black and white edge. And then I will bring that file back into here. and replace this one. And I'll have real a really nice crisp edge. You know what? I'm going to back this up. Now, I did say that this fill in his final design was black, but I might have to take some artistic license to it and go with a, a very, very dark color. I mean, she's got a black robe, yes, so might end up having to be black, but maybe I'll make it like a rich black or something else. I'll probably it do the same with these lines now what a rich black is everybody knows that they're cmyk 
that's how process color is, is printed. There's cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. With K being um, in the CMYK signifying black. Because you can't go CMYB because B might mean blue. So K means black. I don't know how. Maybe it's the last K on the word black is why it's got designated black, but that's how it goes. Anyway, a rich black has is 100% K. Oh, see, I can't pause. But then what you do is you give a small percentage of cyan and magenta and yellow as well. And that way, when it prints, those additional colors go into the print process and the black looks richer. That's why it's called a rich black. If it was just black, just K. Oh, yeah, it would look black, but it, it wouldn't have the same type of luster. What the human eye picks up is real interesting. We can see or perceive colors within colors. The way color works is such a mystery. It's a combination of wavelengths bouncing off of objects and responding to that object. And then coming back at the human eye. Even then, it's still subjective. Some people just don't see color the same way. And of course, you have your people who are colorblind. But what's not to say that uh, the rods and cones in your eyes are configured differently? And someone else. This is moving along great. I am doing dots. Now this is supposed to be a hidden object illustration. So I'm trying to decide What type of hidden objects can I put 
inside this illustration. I suppose I could make one of these. This or like uh, a lace doily um, on her neckline. And I think that uh, Nori stylized it. Now I might be wrong. That went really well. I'm very pleased with that. Oh, who to draw next? I got some. Interesting pieces up here I need to draw. <laughs> I have a bunch of people in costume here. But the person I'm drawing her costume. was all done with cut paper and it was all white. I'm drawing a hand. Making how it's coming out. Came out very good. This is giving you a hankering to draw. Tonight, Cartoonist Northwest is hosting a drink and draw online. So you can sign up through that through Eventbrite. Making these black lines just a little thicker.
hand is pretty big there. That's okay. One of the things I'm not doing is I'm not going back and referring to my original photo reference for this. I'm trusting the lines that I drew for the sketch. And if there are modifications that come in after the fact, like maybe it's not 100% accurate. Nobody is going to really take me up on that. I'm not going to worry about it. A lot of people ask me, what do you do for fun? And uh, after a long day of drawing, I like to draw. <laughs> the truth is a lot of my business uh, involves me doing other things besides drawing. I do a lot of concept work. Well, I'm doing a lot of editing, and uh, I do a surprising amount of writing. I don't claim to be a particularly good writer, but I do a lot of writing. Everything from uh, some basic copy to, uh, oh, I, I write a lot of scripts. Basic stuff for storyboards. More like the stage direction. Big topic of conversation is the weather we're going to have in the next few days. Our temperature is going to go up to over 100 for a few days. And everybody's hoping that it's just going to be for a few days. And not for like a week on them. This is looking pretty good. I think I'm capturing the spirit of the piece. Now, most of the people that see this puzzle will just see a person in costume, but there'll be one or two people who will remember that particular project. 
and probably get a real kick out of seeing the caricature of that project represented. Checking my Facebook page, updating it. I'll see if there were any additional comments. I've been drawing for about 40 minutes. Pretty happy with my progress. I've made a little bit of a dent. Going to keep going. I have some folks in costume here that are in front of this character in the back. And I don't want to bore you guys by drawing the lines for that building in the background because ooh, that will be boring. So I'll leave that off for now, but I'll keep working. I'll draw her other arm and her other shoulder. I think I'll make that just as crisp as I did the other one. Now, tomorrow night is Friday night. And uh, my friend Stowe and I are going to be at the Grand Theater. There are, uh, I put together a group of local artists. And we like to do movie theater posters for the Weird Elephant series, which is a you know, a series of unique films that uh, is put on by the Grand here in Tacoma. And Stowe got to do the poster for Midsummer. And it looks absolutely fantastic. And you can pick up a copy of his print, you know, 11 by 17 at the theater for only 10 bucks. What a deal. That's looking pretty nice right there. I'm thinking of what I can hide. I might have to come back and hide something in here. Oh. So many fun things that could be hidden. Now these other people who are in costume, they're in, they were part of a fun event that was put on by the Tacoma Art Museum called Iron Artist.
and I'm actually going to put in a hidden object right now. I'm putting in a label. And maybe it's not so hidden because people say, well, did, did they use a ladle to make that costume? Well, I can tell you that they didn't, but <laughs> in Iron Artist, you were given a stack of materials and then within an hour, you had to create some art. with that material and everybody was given the same material. And in this challenge, it was supposed to be wearable art. You had to make a costume. Made those lines too thick. I just got a text. Yeah, take a look, see what that is. Could be anything. <laughs> I just got a text from my friend Stowe to remind me to charge up. A square device. So that was fully charged for tomorrow. Well, it is four o'clock, and this is how far we got on the illustration. And just for fun, I am going to do this. I'm going to do a little uh, here's a little quick time lapse replay of what I was drawing or have drawn so far. That's Lynn Benito's jacket. Now I'm working on the Christopher Brennan. Moving a little bit all over the place. And I'm just not getting that box in the corner right. There we go, that looks right. Trying the old city hall. Decided to draw the top of the UFO a little differently so it would match up with the perspective in this illustration. Christina Kitchen says, beautiful. Well, thank you, Christina. Oh, there's me doing a drawing of Russ Richards. And uh, that's Michael King. And there's Andalyn Richards. Now, oh, I'm doing the, the totem pole up on the top left now. Oh, I'm drawing leaves of the trees. Yeah, that's exciting, drawing leaves. 
what else? What's next? Ah, the tent. So, okay, and here's the part that we uh, spent the last 40 minutes trying. Doing the drawing of Lori. A big gestalt image with lots of components like this takes a lot of time, but they are so fun to have and to do. And now you can see the, the drawing on the top right hand corner where I'm working on this uh, large ice princess costume. And that's how much work we got done today. Thanks everybody for joining me today. And I will uh, should probably be doing some more drawing tomorrow. Still haven't picked the time yet. You just have to keep an eye out. Bye all, and thanks. <laughs>